So Tesla is all over the news feeds again because their stock dropped around 9% in a single day. And it made me think, wait, how was Tesla before all of this, before all the stock market and all, all it went public? So I went back in time to think whether they had a pitch deck to raise funds. Apparently, Tesla raised over $20 billion using Elon Musk's help. And for that, they did have a pitch deck. So it was very interesting in looking at it and analyzing it. So let's get this done. Hi, I'm Alan Nani, an entrepreneurship consultant in Zurich. And we all know that Tesla has changed the world as we know it. They changed the, the industry of EVs and how electrical vehicles affect the environment. And they revolutionized an industry. And for them to do that, they must have had some secret recipes of success. And that's probably going to appear in their pitch deck that they convinced investors to invest over 20 billion in their startup. So let's look at the pitch deck and analyze it step by step. So the Tesla pitch deck, is it as crazy as you would think? Why would it raise? I mean, it's not only that, but how would a company raise 20 billion dollars and become a giant? It starts with a pitch deck and this pitch deck is quite interesting. So let's take a look. So they start off with this cover page investor presentation with a logo of Tesla, nothing fancy, just to the point and uh, very easy to understand. I usually add an elevator pitch to the uh, to the cover page so that the the person would know what this company is all about. But this is in the case of startups. Now for Tesla, you already know if you're an investor or if you're interested in investing, you already know what Tesla is about. So you don't really need to, to do an elevator pitch for Tesla at the start. Moving on. <clears throat> so then they start off with building credibility by showcasing the team slide. And by the team slide, they just put in names that are just crazy names like Elon Musk, like all the others and where they're working. Again, it's a very, it also happened in the FTX pitch deck. Not that there is a connection or anything, but they all, it's a very good technique to start with the pitch deck by saying, you know what, we have people who work in Google, in Toyota, in Microsoft, in YouTube, whatever it is, that know the industry quite well. And this is why one of the reasons of we're going to be successful. You see, when a person or an investor invests in a company, usually they take a risk. And that risk is mostly in the team. Are they going to be a good team or are they going to be like SBF and cause a scandal and destroy the company? And for that, it's a good start to understand more about the team. So this is a perfect starter slide to establish credibility and trust. Moving on. So this is showcasing a very important variable that's not really in a lot of investor presentations. Now, this investor presentation, I would say it's more of a sales presentation. It's more like telling the investors, you already know who we are and this is just an extra piece of information and our progress and all the information. So. When you say in this slide, it shows the engineer team growth. And for that, you're just showing that you're growing as a team. If you're growing as a team, then it also makes sense that your product is growing or that your whole startup is growing. So it's a good way to start pitching that we're creating more job opportunities, we're expanding, and that's why we're just increasing in size. So it's again, very good to do that. <clears throat> Toyota. Now the thing is, you want to showcase Tesla is a different game. Tesla is a game that you would, any investor would think, oh yeah, but Volkswagen are just going to take over your company by building a better product. But Toyota, the biggest manufacturer of cars would just, you know, destroy you whenever they want. And that's why they already put here that Toyota is an investor in, uh, in Tesla, that they invested 50 million in the IPO and with all the prototypes and all the information of how they work with Tesla. And that showcases that, you know what, we're already friends with the biggest investors you might think of in the automobile industry, which shows that they trust us. If they trust us, you're not an automobile expert. And even if you are, you're not going to be as good as Toyota. So if they trust us, then you should as well. Panasonic, mainly for the batteries, because batteries are a very big, big challenge when it comes to EVs, how long it can stay. Panasonic is also one of the biggest battery manufacturers in the world, and that's why it's a very good idea to put in the partnership and how it worked. So the next is another third case study. It's just showing, you know what, 
we have a lot of partners and adding you in our partnerships shows that you and the others trust us, which is a good thing. You're not getting into this ocean alone. So Daimler, they just have a big order for vehicles when it comes to EV. And it's again already like showcasing that, you know what? We have orders, we have producers, we have manufacturers from big companies, and we have investors in the biggest automobile company in the world. So perfect case studies and to the point. <clears throat> now they're mentioning their top car at the time, which is the Roadster. And they said there were new stores at Tokyo, Copenhagen, Milan, Newport Beach, and Paris. And uh, it just showcases the expansion. The Roadster started as nothing, and now it's over 8 million miles driven. It's good statistics showcasing the traction of the product. Not just that those people believe in nothing. This is actually a product that they believe in. The Model S, which is what they're talking about right now, which is their big, big bang, according to this presentation. That's why I kept saying this is a sales presentation, because they are showcasing this as if as if they want people to buy these units. Uh, and that's why it's, it's a good presentation, but it's not an average investor presentation. So they're aiming to produce 20,000 units annually, 1% uh, share premium global market. Again, these are projections of what it's going to be like. Either that or they are, yeah, it's projected for 2013, which means this is equal to 2012, such a very long time ago. But they're showcasing the Model S as the new product that is not for a fancy product like Roadster, but an everyday product, which is what happened really. And that's why it's, uh, it's a showcase of product. Again, a few other slides that's showcasing the Model S, pitching it as a product, sales pitch as much as possible, saying the features and the performance of the car, things that an average investor in EVs would think like, oh, how long does it drive? Does it so, is it fast? How long does it go from zero to 60? And so on. So this is answering all these questions. <clears throat> so the reservations, um, and they're showcasing in this slide the reservations of the Model S from the first quarter of 09 to the third quarter of 10, which showcases um, that there are people who believe in it and it's increasing. So, you know, so it's again, it's all traction. But there is a very huge similarity between it and the FTX presentation or the pitch deck because they are both showcasing traction. And when you're a company who's raising more than a billion, you always showcase traction and validity and credibility you want to show them you know that this is a credible product and for that they're doing that as well they don't want to confine themselves to evs they're saying that their future holds a lot of possibilities and that's why there's a future plan slide this is i would say it's called a future plan slide and it just showcases that you can do an SUV, a van, whatever it is. And that showed because they just released a truck, which actually is in line with the pitch deck. So it's quite good in terms of having to predict this and actually creating it in the future. Uh, a timeline for how the Model S is going to be like or how it was like. Alpha build, beta build, product validation. Now that's what they're doing. They're validating a product and they're getting an investment for that. Finally, they're mentioning one of their facilities, building a facility or getting into the automobile industry. It's always known that if you want to get into a startup, in the, if you want to start a startup in the automobile industry, you buy a startup in the automobile industry or you buy a company in the automobile industry. It's not easy to get into this market. And that's why they're showcasing. We also have an advanced facility uh, like the Vermont facility and how their purchase price was with all the details. So they're sewing their logistical uh, power or their factories as well, which is the last piece of the puzzle. They're gonna keep saying that as well. They're saying the assets that they're purchased, they're not just wasting their money in sort of lunches, luxurious lunches or something. So they're showing their purchases and they're just saying a lot about their facility and that's how they wanna end the deck. They wanna end the deck by saying, you know what, your investment is safe. You're not investing in in something that is not tangible. And that's how they ended the pitch deck of Tesla in 2012. So to conclude, the Tesla pitch deck is sort of like the mentioning that, you know what, we are already very well established in this industry. We're pioneers. We're starting to have very good traction. And investing is just common sense at this stage. 
it can't be risky it can't be a scam it's just if you believe in the environment or a good automobile company then you ought to invest in tesla and we have a strong team as you might know so there is no reason why you shouldn't invest in tesla it's more pitching the roadmap of the future rather than you know trying to convince you to invest it's just like creating a fomo effect you know you need to invest right now and here is why so that was the deck if you like this video let me know so that i would analyze more pitch decks like coinbase pitch deck and other pitch decks uh, so don't forget to like this video and subscribe and i'll see you soon